health and safety in the plant, minimum nurse staffing levels in the plant. And the UAW say the issues also include Ford's continued attempts to erode the skilled trades. So everybody knows that cars are more expensive, interest rates are higher. I think many people know that insurance is up. So how are they able to buy so many cars? All that and more, so let's get to it. Tesla stock finished down at the closing bell on Friday, just about a quarter of a percent. Down a little bit more in the after hours, Tesla is currently sitting at 199.52. For the week, Tesla was mildly positive, a little over 3%. For the month, however, down almost 7%. Year to date, still down over 20%. On Friday, I placed a couple zero-day options thinking that the stock would go higher. Yeah, it did not. So, uh, yeah, I kind of threw that money out of the window. With Monday being a holiday, I may kind of forego options next week. Who knows? My mind will change like the wind from now until then. I just finished calculating my fair value estimates for 2024, and I'm as bullish as ever. In my bear case, I still have Tesla at about $315 per share. And that's just the bear case. Granted, many people might consider my whack to be, well, out of whack. But modeling Tesla out 10 years from now to 2034, then dialing it back to get the enterprise value for 2024, I still feel that I'm being very conservative with the figures that I'm using. For funsies, I did throw a multiple in there that is reminiscent to that of a traditional legacy auto manufacturer. Let's just say I can see where Gordon Johnson gets his price targets from. In my opinion, that, that is out of whack. Let's go to that strike story forward in the middle of it. Renita Young, our senior markets correspondent in the newsroom with the latest from the UAW. All right, Renita, what happened? This is supposed to happen at the Kentucky Ford plant. Now, the UAW workers there, it's around 9,000. They are threatening to strike if some of their local contract concerns are not met. Why are they going there? Briefly, it's because it's Ford's largest plant when it comes to employment and revenue, and it produces those heavy-duty pickups, expeditions, Lincoln Navigator SUV, and today you can see shares are falling on thoughts that this strike could happen now the UAW said in a statement that the local contract issues those concern health and safety in the plant minimum nurse staffing levels in the plant and the UAW say the issues also include Ford's continued attempts to erode the skilled trades at the Kentucky truck plant come on Ford you gotta put this bed give the UAW what they want Continue to erode the skilled trade. Sounds like Luddite behavior if you ask me. You need to keep making money to fuel your next generation platform, which is gonna break the automobile industry, hopefully. So what's the read on the ground? I mean, and there's always kind of like a local element to these things is it's plant by plant. It is plant by plant. And the truth is it's about 19 other open local agreements within Ford's family, right? And also several others that are open among Stellantis and GM. By the way, shares for Stellantis and GM also down today as well. All right, so it's uh, kind of a return to a conversation that is a little stressful for investors. Mm -hmm. Uh, as seemed like maybe we were done with that, but I guess we are not, so. It's not done until it's done. Yeah, mm -hmm. all right. It will never be done. Before you know it, we'll be having national talks again, UAW and the big three. Question is, who's gonna be holding the leverage? High interest rates not just making it challenging for prospective home buyers, car owners are experiencing sticker shock and it is squeezing budgets for them as well. According to Cox Automotive, the average new car price is up 30 percent since 2019 to just over forty-eight thousand dollars. Oh wow! You could get a Model Y for less than that, thirty-five-five even if you qualify for the federal tax credit. Car insurance rates nationally rose 20 percent at the end of last year from the prior year, and the average new car loan is up 50 percent from 2021. I can attest to both of those things. USAA, a very good insurance provider, was at price parity with Tesla Insurance. So I couldn't really go to Tesla Insurance because 
USAA was so good. Then they raised the rates and I had to reassess. I now get my insurance from Tesla Insurance. Back in 2021, when we purchased the Model Y, the APR was 2.2%, roughly. That's a fairly inexpensive loan. Still paying more than the minimum, of course. Nobody wants to get eaten up by interest. A couple of years later, however, the APR on the Model X, 5.29. That is 50% more expensive than the last loan that we got in 2021. Times are getting hard out here, folks. Here to discuss rising costs of owning a car and what this is doing to Americans' budgets is Jade Warshaw, a TikTok influencer and co-host of The Ramsey Show. Jade, nice to have you back. Welcome. Well, thanks for having me. So everybody knows that cars are more expensive. Interest rates are higher. I think many people know that insurance is up. So how are they able to buy so many cars? <laughs> You're exactly right. We've seen car insurance go up 20 to 20.8 percent. And Americans are feeling it. You know, the average American pays somewhere around $212 a month just for their car insurance. So that bump in insurance, they're going to be paying an extra $42 to $45. That along with an average car payment of over $700, no wonder Americans are feeling that squeeze. And if they, if they want to stop feeling that squeeze, they're going to have to make some changes. And that starts with their budget. What do they have to do? You know, I always recommend people buy cars in cash. Yeah, could I buy the Tesla cat? Nope, nope, that's not an option. And the moment I say that, people go, what are you saying, Jade? I'm just going to walk out and buy a $35,000 car in cash. Not at all. Most of us just get fed up with our car payment. We sell the car. If we're not able to pay it off in two years or less, I recommend selling that car and really buying a car in cash somewhere around eight or $10,000. And you can always upgrade as time goes on. I think you're I think you're right about that, by the way. I think I've always sort of been told that the, that the most economical way to buy a car is to buy for cash because you don't mm -hmm. in a lease. You've got financing costs are built into the lease or if you take a loan, you've got financing costs there. So it is. But but then that that means that I'm not getting the hot, sweet ride that I want. <laughs> He's absolutely right. Dream car. Check. You can probably check that out right here. But But hear me out. She's absolutely right. If we don't buy the Model X, we could use that money, maybe invest that money into, I don't know, Tesla, and in the next decade, see our money 10X, maybe? Maybe 10X? Well, according to my fair value estimates. And I'm gonna tell you right now, people, if it was just me, if it was just me, that's exactly what I'd be doing. But it's not just me. And my wife, she deserves the absolute best. She deserves to be in one of the safest vehicles known to man. How's the song go? She works hard for the money. So hard for the money, so you better treat her right. I know what the most economical situation is, but uh, we're irrational people, people. That's right, but you know, my buddy Dr. John Deloney says all the time, we've got to choose reality, and we've got to live in the reality of what our finances will allow. And I always tell people, you've got to look at the opportunity cost. When you've got a $700 a month car payment, you could either use that on a sweet ride, as you so eloquently <laughs> said, or you could invest that money and over the next 25 to 30 years, have yourself one $1.1 $1 .1 million. So the choice is up to the consumer. <laughs> is our gas prices giving consumers any relief, especially after what we saw a year or two ago? I, they're probably feeling some relief there, but I feel like it's just been counteracted by this insurance going up. And so at the end of the day, we've just got to be on top of our personal budgets. Every single month, we're making a completely new budget because every month, our money is different and what's required of our money changes. So I always recommend a good, detailed, realistic, flexible budget that is going to solve that problem for Americans. Ding, 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 ding. Tell her what she's won, Johnny. Your mother. Right. I'm not drowning in money over here, people, but we still are able to afford the car payment for the Model X, the insurance for the Model X. And we're not just paying the base payment, people. I fuck hate interest. And I'm not saying that to brag, at least not this time. I'm saying is we sacrifice a heck of a lot in order to get the things that we want. Baby girl goes back to Japan every year. That's not by accident. It's because we sacrifice day in, day out so that she can go back and visit her family and we not be impacted. Those trips ain't cheap. And the maker knows I would rather be using that money 
to dump into Tesla, but we live in the real world. Sacrifices must be made. And that starts with a detailed budget. What do you spend your money on? And is it absolutely necessary? I guess that comes down to the consumer. Are there ways I can reduce my insurance costs? Absolutely. You know, obviously the model of vehicle that you drive does matter. If you drive a Tesla, there's more technology in that vehicle. And so it's going to cost more to replace it or repair it if something were to happen. Yeah, owned a Tesla for four years. Um, haven't had to replace anything yet. I'm sure it's coming, but I imagine that's what the insurance is for. I'm pretty sure the Model X is going to be our forever car. We're gonna try to keep that thing for as long as humanly possible and put as many miles on it as we possibly can. Will we be driving the same Model X in 2034? I sure hope so. In conclusion. Clock's ticking on Ford and the UAW. None of the legacy automakers want a repeat of what happened last year. Get this sh done and move the on. And there's been a squeeze on consumers with car ownership. And no, it's not the gas prices. It's the insurance. It's the loan payment. Hell, the price of vehicles have gone up to where the average is $48,000 for a brand new car. At <laughs> those prices, you might as well foot the bill for a Tesla. Get the best bang for your buck. And uh, if you've seen the light, go ahead and use my referral link down in the description below. That's all I got for you today. Be easy. Purrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrr